This video will show you how to replace the spark plugs on a Subaru Outback with a 2.5 liter engine. You'll have four of these, two along either side of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. To gain access, we're going to have to go down along either side of the engine. Now I'm going to be working on the driver's side of the engine. In my instance, I'm going to have to remove my battery and my battery tray so I have access down in this area. If you are working on the passenger side, you're going to remove the air inlet tube and the air filter box all the way up to the throttle body. That'll give you access. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. To remove the battery, we're going to start with our negative battery terminal. There's a 10 millimeter mounting nut holding this in place. We'll loosen that enough that we can slide that terminal end off of the battery. Just a quick inspection of that, we'll set it aside. Now we're moving along to the positive terminal. Go ahead and remove that protective cover. Another 10 millimeter nut. Quick inspection, we'll set that aside as well. Now it's time to remove the battery hold down. To remove the battery hold down, it looks as though there should be a wiring harness that runs across the top of this, so that's something that you do want to be aware of. As you can tell, our plastic clip is already broken. We don't have too much to worry about here. We'll continue on with the mounting hardware. You're going to find that you have two 10 millimeter headed mounting studs. We'll remove the pair. Let's remove that hold down, set it aside. At this point, let's take hold of the battery and lift it up and out of position. There it is, friend. Remove the plastic battery tray next. That just lifts up and out of position. Now we have access to our metal lower battery tray. Now there's three pieces of hardware out in the open, right up along the top. We're going to wait on those. Looking along this inboard side here, deep down along the body of the vehicle, you're going to find two other mounting bolts. Let's remove the pair. For each of these, we'll be using a 14 millimeter. I've got this almost all the way out of here. Let's just make sure we have our magnet handy. We don't want that to fall. Now we're up along the top. We have our three mounting bolts. We're still using our 14 millimeter. For this mounting bolt, I'm just using a universal socket so I can have an angle. Let's remove that battery tray. Now continuing on, we want to make sure we clean up this area. Now we're going to focus on our ignition coils next. 
For the ignition coils, typically you disconnect the electrical connector first, but in this instance, it's easiest to remove this if you dislodge the ignition coil first. So I'm just using a 10 millimeter for my one mounting bolt. There's one bolt for each ignition coil. The ignition coil should be able to move around and start sliding away from the engine. So now for that electrical connector, it does have a locking tab. You can see it, it's this metal tab right here. It's fairly simple. You just wanna go ahead and press it towards the electrical connector and you should be able to dislodge this. Once you do have it dislodged, a quick inspection for corrosion, of course. Remove the ignition coil from the vehicle. There it is, friend. Before we go any further, it's important to note that you may have oil come out of this area, so have a collection receptacle underneath it. Let's put a collection receptacle under this area just in case there's any oil that makes its way out of the spark plug tubes. Now, if you found that you had oil making its way out of the spark plug tube and it's on your ignition coil, that's something that needs to be taken care of. You have a spark plug tube seal leak. But in your instance, if you do not have any oil, just make sure you wipe down the area and use some compressed air to clean out any miscellaneous debris. Now that we have this area cleaned down, let's continue on with the removal of our spark plug. For this, we want to have a 9 16 spark plug socket. Now it's time for installation of our brand new spark plug. The first thing we need to do is compare the new spark plugs to the original spark plugs. We're confirming that the threaded area is the same exact length. We can't have a spark plug with threads that are longer than the originals. That can cause damage. Aside from that, you want to pay attention to the new spark plug itself. We're also confirming that the ground strap hasn't been peened over or damaged in any way. Now, assuming everything looks good, let's get ready for installation. To install the spark plug, start it into your spark plug socket. Now we're going to get this in place, sliding it into the spark plug tube. It's extremely important to make sure you start this in by hand. It needs to be perfectly aligned. You do not want to cross thread it into your engine. Once you have that bottomed out, we're going to torque that to 18 Newton meters. That essentially converts to approximately 13 foot pounds. I'm just gonna double check that torque. We do not want a loose spark plug that can cause some serious engine damage. Now it's time to install our ignition coil. When installing your ignition coil, add some dielectric lubricant to the very end on the boot area that slides over your spark plug. We'll slide this into position, aligning our mounting bolt port. That should slide right in. We'll continue on with our mounting bolt and I'm going to be torquing that mounting bolt to 60 inch pounds. Now we're just looking for our electrical connector here. We're going to line this up and we'll press it right on there. There's our audible click, a light tug confirming it's secured. Now we can install our metal battery tray bracket. Bring this down into position. We're aligning our mounting bolt ports up along the top. Start them in. We are not tightening anything yet until all of the mounting bolts are started. This is extremely important. And now we have two more down along the side here. All the hardware is started in, let's snug it up. Let's 
Let's get this plastic battery tray in place. Should slide right over the top. We can see our mounting areas. Now, other than that, we also want to make sure we clean and inspect each one of our two terminal ends. If you see any corrosion, you want to clean it up. For this, I'm just using a battery brush. We'll clean this up as well as possible. You can also use some baking soda with water or use some terminal cleaner. Let's get ready to install our battery. We'll take that battery and slide it into place. The next thing you always need to do is clean your terminal ends. Whether they have protectant on them or even corrosion, if you're reusing your battery, you want to make sure you clean it down. I'm using my battery brush. Now let's get our battery hold down in place. I like to have this under my battery handle, assuming you have one of those. Not all batteries do. Now we're going to align the bracket with its corresponding points so we can start in each of our two studs. Go ahead and use some anti-seize on your threaded mounting surfaces. We'll start in each of these two studs by hand. Once they're both started in, go ahead and snug them up. Now that we have those started in, we're going to snug them up. We want to make sure that the battery hold down is snug with the battery. Just go ahead and take hold of that battery and ensure it does not move around. Let's get that positive battery terminal in place first. Press that down onto the terminal end as far as possible and tighten the 10 millimeter mounting nut. Now that we have that tight, let's just make sure it's secure and protect the positive battery terminal. It's time for the negative battery terminal. We'll slide that directly down and onto the battery as far as possible, just like the positive. Tighten your 10 millimeter mounting nut. Now obviously you do want to also secure your wiring harnesses across the top of the battery hold down as necessary. Okay friend, we showed you the installation on one side of the vehicle. The process for the other side of the vehicle is going to be approximately the same. The only difference is you have to remove the air inlet tube. After you've completed everything, go ahead and start the vehicle. You're going to let it run. Make sure you have no check engine light, no running condition. Close the hood, take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.